Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig and I've had several requests to do a steel toe western work boot review. Well today, we have one of Ariat's most popular work boots, the Work Hog. Let's get into it. Old boots got soul and I carry on this way and we get better. Before we begin, I need to mention that this video is also sponsored by Ariat. However, it is in my contract not to let that affect the review. I am supposed to come at this boot honestly and objectively. So it's still something that you should know. Huge thanks to Ariat for supporting the channel. Several of you guys out there have requested Steel Toe Western Work Boot reviews. So here it is today and we have an extended test so I'm gonna be putting these to work as well. But let's get in this box first and see what we have. I'm not getting as many of the leather smells that we like to get when we open up a new pair of cowboy boots but this isn't really a cowboy boot, this is a western work boot. So it uses a lot more rubber and composites in here than a lot of the other boots that we're used to seeing on this channel and therefore it smells more like a new sneaker or a new shoe that uses similar products. But it feels well built and it does have some weight to it thanks to the steel toe. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, let's get straight into the rundown. Like I said, the Work Hog doesn't use as much leather as other boots that we've seen on this channel, but it still has a leather foot and shaft here. And I have the dark earth and brick color, if you are interested in getting this, and I think it looks great. I like that brick color shaft here. We also have a square toe shape, and underneath here we do have the steel toe as well for safety. It's 11 inches tall, and it uses an interesting technology here on the back of the shaft just above the counter, which they're calling their U-turn entry system. So basically it has some elasticity, so when you put your foot in here, your heel can push against this, and it has a way for it to stretch out so that you can make that turn with your instep to get in this boot and have it fit snugly. I know there are some companies out there who don't allow their workers to wear slip-on boots like this. They wanna make sure that they're not gonna fly all over the place, so they require lace-up boots, but this is a great way to make sure that your boots aren't going to fly off as long as you get the right size. Let's talk about size for a second because they make B-widths in this boot, which I am a huge fan of. B-widths is, of course, a narrow width and I was able to get the 11 and a half B. So when you get the correct width boot, that is also going to make sure that the boot is secured to your foot all day long, no matter what you're doing. All right, now let's look at the outsole here. We got a really aggressive tread. This is their Duratread style outsole and it is oil and slip resistant. We also have an EVA midsole here, which you can sort of press in and you can feel how soft it is. EVA stands for ethylene vinyl acetate, which is similar to polyurethane, but it has a little bit more rebound. We can also see the composite shank here, uh, but it's only shown this much. It does run the full width of the boot and that is gonna give you some more stability and support here at the arch. On a lot of traditional cowboy boots, you'll have a metal shank. Uh, this one is composite though, and from what I've read, it seems to hold up well, but we'll find out. Let's move to the lining of the boot. It is lined with a canvas cotton sort of material that reminds me of a thinner version of what Carhartts are made out of. That's lining the shaft, and then what's lining the foot is like a cloth of some sort. For an insole, we have the ATS. This is a classic insole that's in a lot of Ariat boots. It's nice, you do have some foam and some gel in here. Ariat is well known for the comfort insoles that they have, and I would have to say that they're probably the best in the cowboy boot industry at making 
inexpensive budget insoles for their boots. I wouldn't say that they're the best removable insoles in the cowboy boot world, but they certainly are in their budget range. Now let's try this boot on and see how it looks and feels. All right, so it is feeling really good, just like I would expect from Ariat. They have those insoles that feel great right when you put the boot on. I'm also a huge fan that this boot comes in B width because you gotta make sure that you have the right fit and that U-turn also helps you get into the boot and keep the instep snug. My, this, the instep is really snug, but it's not uncomfortably snug. So I really don't feel like this boot is gonna be flying off in any weird situation or anything. I do have a little bit of heel slip, which is what you want in a cowboy boot. The cowboy boot stays on because of the instep, not because of any lace up, like you're gonna want some heel slip in even a Western work boot because that's just the way cowboy boots and Western boots are made. And if you don't have heel slip, you'll probably end up with some blisters and that's not good in a boot that you're gonna end up spending 10, 12, 14 hours a day in. My true size is a 12B. I decided to go with the 11 and a half B just because of the square toe and I've noticed that in a lot of factory made boots I've had to size down about a half a size. You might have to do the same thing with Ariat um, but you also might not depending on the width of your foot. This is the perfect fit for my foot at 11 and a half B and I am uh, super pleased that they are doing those B widths because it makes a world of difference. It is heavy, heavier than what you would usually expect because of that steel toe, but it's not uncomfortably heavy. You also do have some cushioning in that heel because of the EVA midsole, but it's not crazy noticeable like we saw with the shock shield technology on the holder recently. The leather isn't as stiff as some other models that I've tried. This is made in Vietnam. The Rambler is also made in Vietnam and that's really stiff, but this feels pretty nice and it feels like it will break in well too. Now I'm gonna go and work in my father's fabrication shop for a couple days and put these to the test. So let's see what happens. Cardboard didgeridoo. <laughs> The next few days, I'm gonna be testing out these Ariat Work Hog Steel Toe Boots at Twisted Willow Fabrication. We got some of the scrap metal right here. I'm gonna cut it up so it's easier to transport. And you gotta remember, when you have safety boots, you also gotta have the safety glasses. Gonna go through some of this scrap metal, sort it, and get it ready for recycling. We got steel here, aluminum here, stainless here. Time to move this stuff. So I have a good idea. Take this shell wing and we create a hack box to throw metal in, and then we just get rid of the hack box with the metal in it. Can I weld it? You want to? Yeah, I mean it's, it's a box, so might as well have a welder do it. <laughs> I'm the worst welder ever. All right, there's my job. No, we need better. Can I have my helmet? Yeah, I didn't make the team. So this was my side. Look at how horrible it is. And this is a professional side. <laughs> All that for this hack box. Whoops, dropped it on my toe. It's okay. Oh I ripped open the leather. Did you really? Yeah. 
That was a bad drop. All right guys, so this scrap metal can be nasty with its rusty edges and its weight. And this boot definitely saved my toe. It went through the leather and you can actually see the steel toe here, uh, which probably would upset a lot of folks if they just got these boots new, but it probably would happen eventually with steel toe boots. So it's a good test and it's cool to see that if the steel toe wasn't there, it would have gone through the leather and completely ruined my toes. So definitely a good test there for the steel toe. Back to work. Time to load up the trailer with all the scrap metal. Morning everybody, the sun is bright and we are taking this scrap metal up to the recyclers this morning. It's in the city so we got about a 45 minute drive up there so let's get at it. Now it's off to the big scale to measure the rest of the scrap steel. Success! We're all done. We'll see what else happens. All right, so I had an order for a tumbler, and of course, the wine tumblers, the coffee tumblers, the belt buckles, so much stuff comes from Twisted Willow Fabrication that I have in my merch store. So we're starting out in the laser lab, and we're gonna be engraving one of these tumblers. So here's the final piece. Uh, we wash it once more and then ship it out. So this is the wine tumbler. And of course, you got the QR code on the back for the boot vault. And we also do the coffee mug tumblers here too uh, at Twisted Wheel Fabrication. And they are equipped with two lasers in their laser lab. They got the fiber laser over here, which is direct to metal. And the CO2 laser here, which is what you saw the tumbler getting engraved with. Let's make a special area tag right here on this fiber laser. Turned out awesome. Look at how detailed and perfect it is. It's got the Ariat Work Hog boots on the back. Check it out. Now, Ariat has agreed to let me do a special giveaway of this tag. All you gotta do is comment, like, and subscribe to my channel, uh, and I'll pick a comment in about a week. All right, now we have to make a cut at the CNC plasma table. My dad just worked out the measurements on CAD, so now we are bringing it over here and he's already set it up and I get to press the go button. All right, so I am really happy with the work hog performance. It protected my feet really well, obviously, from when I dropped the rotor here on my toe, which happens on the work site. I mean, that's why a lot of steel toe boots will also have a toe cap on it and not just the leather because sometimes the things that you drop on your toes does go through the leather, but that is what work boots are for. This isn't thin leather by any means of the word. It's just like the same thickness that you get with any other Ariat boot or many other brands altogether. So 
real happy with the performance of this work hog. It was also really comfortable thanks to the B width. I just think that's really important to have narrow size work boots out there for the best fit and the most comfortable wear all day long. However, it did stretch quite a bit. I'm a 12B, I chose the 11 and a half B, and it was a little bit tight, especially on the instep, but then it broke in real fast and got kind of loose which is okay because I wouldn't ordinarily wear thin socks with a work boot. I feel like it sets it up better for winter work with wearing wool work socks or thicker boot socks, but that's still something to know is that it does stretch out quite a bit when wearing it, so you might want to try it on with thinner socks at first until you get it broken in and then start to work in your regular thicker work socks. These are also pretty heavy at two pounds and four ounces each. So total, it's about four and a half pounds that you're gonna be adding to your frame when you wear these, but that comes with the steel toe territory. I used to wear Red Wing steel toe boots when I worked on the buildings and grounds crew at my local water company, and we would do different landscaping, you know, construction jobs, pouring concrete, you name it, we did it. And I would have to say that these performed just as well as I remember those Red Wing Steel Toes performing. I actually kind of wish that I got these back then because I kind of like the pull-on work boots a lot better than those lace-up Red Wing style boots that I used to wear for that job. The ATS insole was okay in this work hog boot. It was comfortable, still my feet were kind of exhausted at the end of the day, probably having to do a lot with the weight of these. Still, I know that Ariat can do better with their insoles. The ATS Max, the 4LR are all better, but it is not the worst. I still feel like their Energy Max insole is still worse than the ATS, so this does the job very well. However, I know that they have better insoles in their boot lineups. So I think these are definitely worth it at the $170 to $200 price range. And if you are watching this within days of it being posted, Ariat is currently doing an essential worker sale running from October 11th, 2020 to October 14th, 2020. And the links to that are in the description. As far as the Ariat keychain is concerned, Ariat has agreed to let me give this away as long as I state that this is the only one and I'm not selling these. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will choose the winner in a week. But if you don't happen to win, we also made a bunch with my Jeremiah Craig stuff on it. So we got about three options. One with my logo, one with kick ass and take names on it, and the other with old boots got soul, and you can get these on my store at jeremiahcraig.com slash store for $8 each. And they also have a QR code on the back to get you access to my Boots and Ballads vault on my website. So this is the cheapest way to get access to that vault. Thanks for watching today. Huge thanks to Ariat for sponsoring this video. It's because of their sponsorship that I was able to take the time and put these boots to work at Twisted Willow Fabrication like I did. So. It's a huge, huge help when brands sponsor videos like this. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Peace. Get those work hogs on. Don't you know we got a job to do? Yeah, get those work hogs. They'll help us see it through. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching today. My name is Jeremiah Craig Don't forget to subscribe while you're here I got lots more videos Huge thanks to Ariad for sponsoring today's video Hey I'll see you next time